Um, so today we'll be covering um, the analysis of single piles and um, the objectives of the webinar are that you should be able to appreciate single pile analysis methods and the OASIS software used for these analysis. Um, so for example, I'll be covering AdSec Pile and ALP for single pile analysis. But um, this specific webinar um, has a slightly different stance to the previous um, webinars, and that, that is that um, Pile 19.3 has recently been introduced, and Pile 19.3 has a new feature. And this new feature is the analysis of um, single piles and pile capacity to EC7. So I'll be running through that in much more detail. So I won't be covering AdSec and ALP in so much detail today. Um, also, um, uh, by the end of this webinar, you should be able to appreciate how the Oasis Piling Suite as a whole has been used in industry. So for example, how AdSec, Pile and ALP have been used in conjunction to solve single pile problems. Our webinars and um, this specific web webinar is only really covering higher level theory. It will briefly touch into the programs and look at case studies. But if you're interested in, in um, setting up models, for example, in AdSec, Pile and ALP and the whole process of it, there are tutorials available on our website. Um, also, you may be interested in analyzing piles as part of an embedded retaining wall. So you can check out our webinars on FRU. And also, um, a lot of people um, in the previous webinars are on, on piles have shown an interest in analyzing pile groups. So our program GSA Raft covers this, um, and it's quite advanced. Um, so in that case, you might be wanting to watch uh, one of our previous webinars on GSA Raft, but I wouldn't have time to cover it all today. So. Coming back to single piles, um, I thought I'd start by de defining a single pile. And a single pile is a pile that, when loaded, doesn't have any interaction effects with the adjacent pile. The spacing between the piles depends on the solution modeled and the ground conditions. But the spacing should be large enough that, such that you don't have those interaction effects. So here I've covered um, different types of piles. So for example, we've got H piles and solid piles. This is all from Craig's soil mechanics, but it just gives you an idea of the different types of piles that can be analyzed. And the Oasis suite has three programs which are very useful for analyzing single piles. Um, if you're looking at the pile capacity, and settlement analysis under axial loading, then Oasis Pile is a program for you. Um, it'll give you, for example, the required length of the pile and the pile settlement. Um, Oasis ALP is um, used to deal with pile lateral loads, not axial loads, and displacements. So um, this would give you, for example, outputs such as moment and cage length. And um, outputs such as moment will then be fed into a program like ADSEC. And what AdSec does is it takes a 2D section of the pile and it looks at how that pile section performs. So nonlinear concrete and composite section analysis is exactly what it does. And it will give you, for example, stiffness values and the, uh, the EI values and cracking as well. So crack widths and, and show you how the section is performing. So what I'll do is I'll start with Oasis Pile. And Oasis Pile calculates pile capacities and settlements. Um, pile capacity and settlement both use different types of theory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with pile capacity. Um, Oasis pile determines the vertical load capacity for, uh, for a pile. And this is for different pile types, different pile materials, a range of pile lengths, um, different types of soil layers and stratigraphies, site-specific groundwater conditions, and different factors of safety or design resistance. And as I've mentioned, uh, most recently we've added, for example, um, codes. So you can actually factor in according to codes such as EC7. So why use Pile? A lot of people actually design piles using spreadsheet calculations. And um, unfortunately, there, there are often inherent errors uh, within spreadsheets. So for QA purposes, a program like Oasis Pile is ideal. Um, it's able to calculate shaft and base capacity for total stress, effective stress, or a combination of both. It can also model um, more advanced features. For example, it models plugged and unplugged behavior for tubular and H piles. Um, it can incorporate negative skin friction. And um, it simplifies design to codes such as EC7. So penultimately, once you've run a pile analysis, you'll get ultimate and allowable capacities and tension and compression capacities. 
but um, this is based on inputs such as pile section under reams and soil parameters. So what I'll do is I'll just briefly um, and very briefly um, cover EC7 and pile analysis and then I'll go into pile 19.3 and show you how this works. So in terms of pile analysis to EC7, Eurocode 7 has been introduced some time back now but it's becoming more and more prominent in design, especially pile design and foundation design, uh, retaining wall design for example. Section 7 specifically covers pile foundations and in section 7 Eurocode 7 will tell you how to deal with pile load tests, um, how to design axially loaded piles, so this includes ULS compressive or tensile resistance bearing capacity and vertical displacements of pile foundations. It also tells you about transversely loaded piles and structural design of piles. So what I'm going to do is today I'm going to focus on um, design approach one. And there are three design approaches in Eurocode, so, um, Eurocode 7, design approach one, two and three. But the reason I'm focusing on design approach one is that's what's used primarily in the UK. But if you're in mainland Europe, for example, design approach two or three may be of interest. So for all these design approach, approaches, you have different uh, model factors and they can be applied within Oasis Pile. Um, you also have to consider your load testing um, and this can also be done via Oasis Pile. But um, for design approach one specifically, there are two combinations of factors. Um, that's combination one and combination two. And these factors are factors on actions, materials and resistances. So, for example, if you look at the right-hand side of this particular slide, you'll see the factors on actions. And if you look at the left-hand side, you'll see factors on resistances. So these kind of factors also depend, for example, on load tests. In terms of factors on materials, um, it depends on the type of calculation for combination two, what factors you would use. But, uh, for example, if you're calculating power resistance, the program would know this and, and um, it would apply M1. And if you're calculating unfavorable action on piles, um, you would use M2 instead. And um, by the way, all these factors are in Annex A of Eurocode 7. So if we were to run um, an, OA an EC7 analysis, what I've done is I've given you the steps in Oasis Pile. Um, but and this will really become much clearer once I actually show you the program. But I'm just going to run through it here just to show you that it is, it is a step-by-step -step procedure. So what you would do is you would start with the analysis options. So um, in the first pass, you would say, am I doing a capacity calculation or a settlement calculation or a combination of both? The capacity data will tell you um, if you're designing, for example, um, if you're doing a working load design or if you're designing to code. Um, the power properties can be inputted via, via a wizard and I'll show you how that works very soon. You've got materials and soil profiles, groundwater and the soil profile groundwater map. So that all has to be input, inputted for your pile. And also apply loads and displacements. So, you know, for an EC7 design, for example, what are your characteristic loads? And, um, and they, can be uh, they can be applied directly into Oasis pile. So what uh, what I've done is I've looked at a specific example. This is an example from a paper written by Frank in 2006. The paper is titled Design of Power Foundations Following Eurocode 7. And it's readily, readily available on the internet. Um, this example has been applied, um, I think, uh, more generally to Eurocode 7. But what uh, we have done in OASIS is look at this example and apply it to um, to um, the UK annex of Eurocode 7. So the factors are slightly different. But in essence, all, the actual problem is the same. So the pile geometry is, is the same and the soil data, the groundwater data and the load data. So the pile geometry is for a circular driven pile, with a six, which is 600 mm diameter. The soil data is as given in the paper. Uh, based on the SPT, we've got the end bearing stress and the skin friction stress. The groundwater table is inputted again into Oasis Pile and the characteristic permanent load and variable load are given in the paper and they're applied in Pile. 
Um, of interest is, although this paper is a very good paper, and it does give you details on, on the design of power foundations, if you do need more details on, on how to design power foundations or want to understand it further, uh, we would recommend, for example, the book um, Decoding Eurocode 7 by Bond, um, which Gil Richard gives a lot of examples and a good idea of how to design piles. So if I just go into the pile file, Okay, as, as I um, initially said, there's, it's a step-by-step -step process. You start with an analysis options. So you go for capacity or settlement or both. Um, you've also got um, the effective stresses, which which chosen is calculated here. And um, you can choose a datum, type of datum you have. So in accordance with the published problem, we've got depth below ground level. For the capacity data, you can choose working load, design resistance, or code based. So for this specific example, we've chosen UK National Annex because um, because we have um, because it's it's quite a good example. But um, as you can see here, for UK National Annex, we've got design approach one, combination one and two. I've got the model factor of 1.4. But if you're not in the UK or you want to apply a different type of type of national annex. You've got the option of actually inputting these these values in. So you've got to do design approach two or three, and you can input your model factor in. So it gives you quite a little bit of flexibility. Um, as I previously mentioned, there's a wizard in Pile, which allows you to put the power properties in. So as you can see, we've got a solid circular pile here. We've got a range of lengths, and we've got one pile diameter, which is 600 mil. For this specific problem, we've only got sand. But um, of interest here is that you can actually put the material factors in here under the material properties. We've also got the applied loads and displacements. Again, the action factors can be applied. And as you can see here, we've got the applied loads and displacements, permanent and variable. So the tabular output is always very useful. So you can see we've got a tabular output here, which can be exported. We've also got a graphical output. Um, so we've got, the, for example, if I just look at the ultimate loads. So we've got the ultimate load and the design load, intention and compression. So that gives you an idea of how your pile is performing over different lengths. Of interest also here is that here we've chosen one specific diameter of pile. But if you notice under the pile properties wizard, you can choose more than one diameter. So, for example, if you know that your pile needs to resist a specific level, a specific loading, for example, you can put a number of diameters of pile and compare the way they perform. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how pile works and how the new EC7 feature works. So the developments for pile 19.3 are it it can now support. Um, uh, driven board and CFA pile, so you can specify a number of different types of piles. You can select design approach one, two, or three. You can apply mo a model factor. Um, you can uh, apply user-defined factors. The program itself is able to differentiate between permanent and variable, and favorable and unfavorable loading, which is critical for the uh, correct kind of the correct application of the factors. So that's that's a very powerful tool. And also, um, there's automatic calculation of correlate, correlation factors based on the number and type of tests. So this is something I didn't cover in so much detail, but EC7 um, changes the factors in accordance with your load testing. So, um, so that's actually quite a, a useful feature, and it really helps with the EC7 design. So I've covered capacity and the pile capacity analysis and, and um, EC7, but pile actually has a different feature as well. And it allows you to calculate the settlement. So you can either calculate capacity and settlement, settlement or capacity. And um, settlement is based on um, the theory by Mats and Poulos. And the way it works is, is, is that it's an elastic model. It uses the Young's modulus of the pile and the soil above and below the pile. And it calculates the performance, basically, of, of um, sections of the pile. For the pile settlement calculation, um, it outputs pile settlement, the soil settlement away from the pile, and pile stresses. 
and that's based on inputs such as pile dimensions, soil stiffnesses, the negative skin friction and heave. So having covered the way a pile behaves, for example, on axial loads, um, how do you calculate the pile's behavior and performance under transverse loading and moments? Well, Oasis Alp would be the tool for this kind of analysis. Oasis Alp calculates earth pressures, horizontal movements, bending moments and shear forces based on lateral loads, moments or displacements, lateral and rotational restraints and soil load reflection behavior, deflection behavior. The way the analysis works is that um, the program models a pile as a series of elastic beam elements and it models the soil as a series of non-interactive, non-linear springs. The forces and moments and stiffnesses are applied at the nodes and the nodes can be anywhere. They don't just need to be at the top of the pile. So you can apply, you can basically apply the forces, moments and um, stiffnesses at any point along the pile. And the soil response is modeled as elastic elastic plastic or PY. Now this is a unique feature to Oasis Pile because um, basically if I go into the details of the theory um, you can have a look at the elastic plastic model and what this does is, is that it's, it assumes elastic behavior until the passive limit is reached but this isn't realistic it's a very simplistic way of modeling, modeling, modeling soil because modeling doesn't uh, soil doesn't behave in this in this way and um, a lot of studies have been done and they've found that uh, soil behaves in a non-linear manner. So um, a specific reason why Oasis Alp is, um, is quite unique um, and specifically useful is the fact that instead of defining soils as elastic plastic, which isn't realistic, you can actually define them um, with regards to the PY soil model. And um, there are actually a lot of predefined curves. So you've got soft clay, stiff clay, sand, weak rock, and strong rock. And these are actually already inputted into Alp for you. So you could, for example, say I've got soft clay overlying sand, overlying strong rock. The user can also define PY curves for different types of strata. So if you have a different type of strata, you know their response is different. You can input that in. But a further reason why Oasis Alp is particularly popular is because, for example, um, if you were considering an offshore wind turbine on a monopile, you would have cyclic loading and that loading would be transverse and cyclic. So instead of having to go through the difficulty of modeling that using 2D or 3D FE, you can model it using Oasis Alp because it can consider a cyclic loading as well. So basically for Oasis Alp, the kind of outputs you get to tabular, which can be export, exported into Excel and it's quite handy. Um, you've got different increments as well. Um, you can check the results using your graphical output. So I'll quickly show you how to do that in a second. Um, and the bending moments and shear forces um, can be used for reinforcement design. And the case study later on will demonstrate how that can be done. So if I go into Oasis Alp now, you can see we've got the elastic plastic analysis and um, the specified PY curves, which can be specified by the user and the generated PY curves. So for a very simple model, uh, what we've done here is we've said, look, the pile is in sand and um, there are some applied loads and displacements. You've got a force and moment here. Um, you can also put restraints and surcharges in which haven't been done for this specific problem. Um, and you get a graphical output and a tabular output. So say, for example, for this specific loading, um, this is the envelopes of um, bending moments, shear forces, um, displacements and um, rotations, for example. And so this gives you the maximum bending moment, which you can feed into a program like ADSEC and look at how the pile is performing in terms of its cross section. So that nicely moves me on to ADSEC. So we've had a look at PILE and how the PILE performs under, under axial loading. We've had a look at ALP and how the PILE performs under transverse loading and moment loading, for example. And now we're having a look at a section of the PILE. So based on, you know, the kind of moments that are occurring, kind of forces that are occurring on the PILE, 
how does a pile behave? So ADSEC is a nonlinear concrete and composite section analysis. And um, although a pile is shown to the left-hand side, it can deal with lots of different types of analysis. So as you can see, it can deal with a mixture of concrete and metal and, and quite complex analysis. So the program carries out a strain plane analysis for any given section to solve the equation shown here. It can carry out both a ULS or ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state analysis. So you get the ultimate strength of the section. Um, and you can use material factors or strength reduction factors. But you can also do an SLS analysis, so, so you can calculate the short-term loading and creep, for example, by looking at the section in its normal working state. So for the outputs, um, ADSEC gives you the nonlinear concrete and composite section analysis. And it will um, give you outputs such as section capacity, stiffnesses, and cracking based on the section you input reinforcement and loads. So here's just an example of kind of the load moment charts. One useful feature of um, feature of ADSEG is that for example you can have a look here and see that um, in this specific um, load case you can you can plot your load cases so what's happening to your specific section and see how it's performing in terms of the performance of the pile. So, for example, if this load case was outside the pile, that would be outside this particular envelope, that would be of concern. So, much the same could be said about the moment capacities um, and the serviceability. So, um, so looking at the stiffness against moment. So, basically, ADSEC um, does an ultimate and serviceability condition check. It can do it on regular and irregular concrete and composite sections. Um, it gives you the nonlinear cracked section stiffness and capacity and also cracked widths. So if I go into the program, you can better understand what's going on. Um, what we've done here is we've set up a pile um, as such a cross section. It's, it's very easy to do and um, I, can show, I can send you a link to previous webinars where we show you how to do this. Um, you've got um, the ULS analysis and the SLS analysis and the actual capacity graph. So if, if I just quickly go and click on this, you can see that very quickly you can get up a, a section capacity. Um, you could do an SLS analysis on the low cases. And once you've done that, if I wanted to just look at crack results, for example, I can get something like the crack widths out very quickly and very easily. So that just gives you an idea of how, how quick um, ADSEC is to use um, and how powerful it can be for pile analysis. So that's covered the three programs and that's covered theory um, very well and, and, and you should now understand how they apply to single pile analysis. But the case study will really um, will really help you understand much better how they're used in conjunction with each other. So I'll start off with, with a case study um, from one of our customers, Bern Luby Partners. I'd like to thank them for this specific case study. Um, and this case study um, this specific project was McCarthy's level crossing near Kilmarnock and the design um, was for a pile with transverse loads. So for this specific project, Burn Luby Partners were asked to design the pile foundations for the proposed replacement of McCarthy's level crossing. The piles had to resist a 830 kilonewton maximum uniaxial compressive load and no tension or moment loads would be t were to be transferred to the pile. So um, you basically had a restraint um, and the piles were subjected to 175 kN horizontal load uh, from the superstructure um, and, and also rotation, rotational restraint. So all piles were designed to be um, bearing in the stiff to very stiff boulder clay. So this was a conservative design. And also the consulting engineers specified the piles to be a minimum of 600 mil in diameter. So for this specific problem, um, Bern Luby partners um, analyzed the pile using ALP. They applied a rotational stiffness for the pile cap and all the piles were fully tied into the pile cap. So the maximum shear force that was outputted was 175 kilonewton meters. So it's shown here um, on the graphical output. And the maximum bending moment, it was 145 kilonewton meters. 
the predictor pal head movement was less than 10 mil, which was important because that was a criterion from the designers. It's also worth noting that if you look down to where the bending moment goes to zero, we've got that in around minus 6.5 meters. So for that reason, the PAL reinforcement should be installed to a minimum depth of 6.5 meters below the PAL cutoff level, just like the output, um, ALP output specifies. <coughs> as well as the ALP analysis, an ADSEC analysis was carried out. So the power, reinforce, right, the power reinforcement capacity had to be checked using OASIS ADSEC. And further to that, um, we know that at 800, 830 kilonewton compressive load, um, from the ADSEC output, you've got a maximum allowable bending moment of 280 kilonewton meters. But we can have a look at how, from our ALP outputs, this specific section is performing by um, remembering that previously in ALP the generated bending moment was 145 kilonewton meters um, and the factor of safety is 1.5 so um, for this specific problem we've got um, a design bending moment of 218 kilonewton meters and if you have a look at this chart you can see that the 218 kilonewton meters is well within the envelope so we're spe for this specific problem, we're quite safe. So that gives you an idea of how uh, one of our customers has used ALP and ADSEC in conjunction. A much more complex problem uh, was, was, um, was met by the Arab engineers in London, and this was for the UCL hospital design. This, this um, involved a building in, in the middle of London, and as you would imagine, there were uh, restrictions due to building proximity. In this case, um, the Rain Institute was very close to the UCL building. And further to this, there was also a requirement to locate a service lift um, because of tight space restric restrictions. So um, because of the requirement to put the service lift in, um, the wall thickness had to be um, very different because of the space restrictions involved. So the proposed solution, as you can see, the specific diagram shows the actual proximity of the RAIN Institute to the piles in the UCL hospital. So for this specific problem, the Arab engine is proposed to construct a 600 mil diameter hard soft board second pile wall. Um, and also a smaller pile diameter of 600 mil um, was required to be pop propped in two areas. So uh, what was initially done by the Arab engineers was they, um, they looked at this specific problem, they looked at the retaining wall design and they analyzed it using Oasis FRU. And by analyzing the retaining wall, they got out the horizontal ground movements and the vertical stresses. So as you can see here, we've got our horizontal ground movements, which feed into ALP and uh, the vertical stresses which feed into pile. So both ALP and pile were looking at the RAIN Institute pile um, and from the horizontal ground movements and vertical stresses, we could then calculate the axial stresses that were induced in the pile and the moments that were induced in the pile. Based on the axial stresses and moments, these were fed into ADSEC and ADSEC could basically um, analyze the performance of the pile and give out values for cracked EI or cracked stiffness. So um, this is all very iterative, as you can see, and it's a very circular procedure. But um, further iterations were required because once you have the cracked stiffness from ADSEC, that could be fed back into ALP, and the moment again could be fed back into ADSEC to give much more accurate values in, or a much more accurate interpretation of how ADSEC is behaving. So for this specific problem, as you can see, um, there's actually, it, it seems like there might be quite a lot of work because you're running four different types of analyses. But um, one very interesting thing that the Arab engineers said was that because the gateway system is very similar for all of them, it's quite easy to copy and paste between the programs. It was much quicker than they had ever anticipated. And this specific analysis didn't take more than half a day. So, so that in itself was very encouraging. And, and it shows how these programs can actually be used together. Um, and they can be used together very well. So this is just an output to give you an idea of, of, um, 
of the settlement feature of Oasis Pile. So um, this was for the UCL hospital specifically, and as you can see, you can see the shaft skin friction, the pile stresses and displacements are all outputted um, based on the Mats and Poulos um, theories. Okay, so that's brought me to the end of the case study section. Um, and hopefully now you can understand how these programs uh, work and um, how they're used in industry and how they're applied in industry. Also, coming back to what I previously said, um, the three different programs are all used to calculate single pile analysis. Um, they're based on different analysis methods and they give you the different design outputs such that pile, for example, gives you required length and settlement. ALP will give you um, the output moments and the cage lengths and ADSEC looks at the section so it gives you stiffnesses and cracking. So finally, to come full circle, uh, we're coming back to our webinar objectives. And today, um, hopefully after all our discussion, you should be able to appreciate the single pile analysis methods and um, the OASIS software used for these different types of analysis. So how do you an analyze a single pile with axial loading, transverse loading, and how do you look at the performance of the pile in itself? Um, also, I've covered in much more detail pile 19.3. Um, the new feature um, covering EC7. And so you should be able to analyze single pile capacity to EC7. I've also mentioned some references and um, the section in EC7 which pertains to analyzing piles. Uh, you should also be able to appreciate how the Oasis Piling Suite has been used in industry through the two specific case studies that we've chosen. So these give you a good idea of how the programs can be used together um, in a very powerful manner. So, it now goes for me to say thank you very much for your time and um, I hope this has been useful for you and um, hopefully after listening to all this you will probably try and use the programs in a different way and um, you, would, um, you, you, can, you can do that by trying out the step-by-step -step examples which are available in the manual. You can have a look at our online tutorials. Um, all of this can be accessed through the product pages. So if you go to the left, right hand side of the product page under support, you can download the user manual and you can look at the tutorials. Um, you can contact us. So for example, email us at, at oasis.arab.com or even give us a telephone, give us a call and we can help you. One uh, very useful feature and a tip that I think is worth recommending to you is that at the bottom of the Oasis um, website page and on every Oasis page um, you've got this link as this red box shows to the YouTube channel. Now the YouTube channel has a specific geotechnical channel and within there you can have a look not only at the analysis of single piles and how Oasis Pile or ALP or ADSEC work, but maybe you can look if you're interested at analyzing pile groups so you should be able to better understand how, for example, GSA Raft works. Or you might be interested in a retaining wall design so you can look into more detail into how um, Oasis FRU works. So all of that, that is available via our YouTube page. Um, and there are a lot of um, features there available for you. So um, thank you very much for your time. I hope this has been specifically useful to you. Um, and um, we would really like to thank you and um, ask you if you have any questions.